we are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon. Today, our first day to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, our first day of the Novena to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, we celebrate the Feast of St. Charles Rwanga and Companions Matters. Our people who excelled themselves in the love that they had for God. And it's just appropriate that we open our novena with such examples. The theme for our day is that God sustains my life. If at all I'm alive today, it's because of the love of God. It's because God never stops to come close to me, to nurture me, to sustain me. My dear sisters, my dear brothers, us who are loved so much by this God, we need to retaliate, to love back. We need to show the love that we have for our God and for our brothers and sisters. However, oftentimes we fail to love back. We fail to show our love. In that way, we have sinned. As we begin celebrating this Mass, let us go to mind all those moments when we failed to love our brothers and sisters, we failed to love our God, and we plead for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God. I do greatly sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, bless Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Mighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have made the blood of martyrs the seed of Christians, mercifully grant that the field which is your church watered by the blood shed by Saints Charles Rwanga and his companions may be fertile and always yield you an abundant harvest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
We are prepared to die rather than break the laws of our ancestors. A reading from the second book of Maccabees, chapter 7, verses 1 and 2, and then 9 to 14. There were seven brothers who were arrested with their mother. The king tried to force them to taste pig's flesh, which the law forbids by torturing them with whips and scourges. One of them, acting as spokesman for the others, said, what are you trying to find out from us? We are prepared to die rather than break the laws of our ancestors. With his last breath, the second exclaimed, in human fiend, you may discharge us from this present life, but the king of the world will raise us up since it is for his laws that we die, to live again forever. After him, they amused themselves with the third, who on being asked for his tongue, promptly thrust it out and boldly held out his hands. With these honorable words, it was heaven that gave me these limbs. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. From him, I hope to receive them again. The king and his attendants were astounded at the young man's courage and his utter indifference to suffering. When this one was dead, they subjected the fourth to the same savage torture. When he neared his end, he cried, ours is the better choice to meet death at men's hands yet relying on God's promise that we shall be raised up by him. Whereas for you, there can be no resurrection, no new life. This is the word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, our response is, our life like a bird has escaped from the snare of the fowl. Our life like a bird has escaped from the snare of the fowler. If the Lord had not been on our side when men rose against us, then would they have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled? Our life, like a bird, has escaped from the snare of the fowler. Then would the waters have engulfed us, the torrent gone over us, over our head would have swept the raging waters. Our life, like a bird, has escaped from the snare of the fowler. Indeed, the snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Our life, like a bird, has escaped from the snare of the fowler. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit. 
Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy the gentle, they shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Happy the merciful, they shall have mercy shown them. Happy the pure in heart, they shall see God. Happy the peacemakers, they shall be called sons and daughters of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we begin our novena to the sacred heart of Jesus. When we talk of the sacred heart of Jesus, there is a visual image that we have. And thankfully, it's put there in front of us. A heart, a human heart, believed to be the heart of Jesus, is presented to us. And for us, that heart, that human heart, symbolizes the divine love for humanity. The love of God for humanity. My dear sisters, my dear brothers, we know very well that love has always an object. There can never be love without an object. It's always, I love you, she loves him, he loves her. There is always an object. Love cannot stand on its own. And when we talk of divine love, we are talking of this divine connection with the human persons, with humanity, with humankind. God is closely connected to his creation, to his creatures in the name of you and me. God cannot afford to stand without you and me, the creatures that he has created for his own. Privileged creatures. He loves us so much, that's why this God constantly sustains us. Constantly nurtures us so that we remain in good standing vis-a-vis -vis him. We remain connected to him. Yes, from time to time, because we are human beings, we do make mistakes. We go off tangent. We leave the path that the Lord has traded for us, and we begin seeking other paths. Unfortunately, paths that do not lead where God wants us to be. 
we go astray. We destroy ourselves. We begin by destroying our neighbor. We begin by destroying our sisters, our brothers. Sometimes we even destroy our own children, our own spouses, our own friends. We seem to live under a distorted notion, thinking when we destroy the other, we are going to prove how great we are, how strong we are. But that's a distortion. That's a lie. After we have finished destroying everybody else and there is no one, no other person to destroy, we turn towards our own selves. We stab our own selves. We kill our own selves. We destroy our own selves. That's why we are constantly reminded to love God with all our minds, our souls, our hearts, our strength, our total selves. Having loved God, to love neighbor as we do love our own selves. If we succeed in doing this, then we are going to have a community that God wants to see in our midst. A community that is caring, a community that is loving, a community that is charitable, a community that is compassionate, a community that is kind, a community that is creative, not a community that is destructive. That is not the intention of God to make us destroyers, to make us killers. That's not the intention of God. The intention of God is to have you and me as co-creators. People who are eager to create, to bring life. And not just to bring life, but to sustain life. God wants to see responsible responsible believers, responsible creatures. You and me are called to this responsibility, the responsibility of bringing forth, begetting life, and never to forget from birth to death to make sure that our project is all about bringing life and sustaining life. The different missions that we have received, a good number of us in here are parents. Yes, physically you brought life, but the mission didn't end there. The mission still continued. You've brought forth this physical life here on earth but you've got to continue with that responsibility of sustaining life. That's why you can't rest. You woke up very early in the morning. You went to your offices. You went to your field. You went to work. To work, hopefully, so that you can sustain life. Whose life? Your life, of course. The life of your spouse, I guess. The life of your children, I suppose. The life of all those people who are connected to you. So you are not going to complain that I'm sweating, I'm working hard. Remember, it's the responsibility, the mandate given to you 
by God. The question today that I ask myself, that you ask yourself is, how am I sustaining life? Look around yourself and ask yourself this question. Am I sustaining life? Through the way I live my life, through my attitude, am I a life sustainer? Is my spouse looking up to me as somebody who can sustain life? Are my children looking up to me as somebody who can sustain life? Are my parents looking up to me as somebody who can sustain life? Whether you are working or you are not working, the question today is, how am I going to sustain this life before me? How am I going to sustain this life before me? We know very well that where there is life, there is joy. Where there is life, there is celebration. Where there is life, there is jubilation through my life. Am I bringing joy to others? Am I making others celebrate? Am I making others smile? Or am I a person who brings forth sadness? Am I a person who diminishes life in others? Am I a person who makes others feel depressed? Immediately I appear, everybody else gets depressed. Am I such a kind of a person? If so, if yes, my brother, my sister, the Lord God is inviting each one of us to turn around, to convert, to begin begetting life, begin sustaining life. The Lord God reminds us that we are not just useless creatures. We are valuable creatures. We are children of God. And as children of God, we carry that divine dignity. The divine dignity bestowed upon me, bestowed upon you, bestowed upon us. By the mere fact that we carry this identity as children of God, we are honorable, we are adorable, we are respectable, we are valuable, we are significant, we are important. And because we are valuable, that's why God cannot just throw us out like that. We cannot just be left like that. God pursues us, follows us, and makes sure that when we are hurt, we are mended. When we have some kind of a dent on ourselves, we are panel beaten so that we come back in good shape. Why? Because we are valuable. We are significant. We are important. We are called to carry along this dignity and to present this dignity to the world wherever we go. In our places of work, we are called to demonstrate that we are not just mere human beings we are children of God. Dignified children of God. Respectable children of God. Valuable children of God. If I carry this in my mind, then I'm going to be mindful of what I say. I'm going to be mindful of what I do. I'm going to be mindful of where I go. I'm going to be mindful of what kind of associations I entertain because I'm a child of God. As we go out today, 
we may carry the question with us, what things would diminish my being? What things would diminish my identity? What things would make me gain bad reputation? Is it excessive drinking? Is it gossip? Is it slothfulness, laziness? Am I a malingerer at work? Always just malingering about, malingering. I never finish exercises given to me. I'm in this office, I'm in that office, I'm in that office, I'm in that office until 17 hours, I knock off. Tomorrow, as long as it's marked, have come. If I am such kind of a person, then I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Christian because then I'm not listening to what God is asking of me. A Christian who is a professional has to be different from a professional who is not a Christian. A Christian who is a professional carries the gospel on his shoulders, on her back, on her head, balances the gospel on the head wherever he or she goes. And everybody else notices that there is a difference between this person and that person. This person is a believer. That person is not a believer. In the neighborhood, I'm going to be seen because of the love that I carry. As seen from the way I take care of my family. The way I move around with my wife. The way I take pride in my husband. The way I respect my children, the way I respect my parents, everybody else is going to say, this person is different from that other person. Why? Because I have allowed the love of God to sit in my heart. I carry that love of God. We pray today that we may know that we utterly depend on God for our being, for our survival. Without God, we are nothing. And because we utterly depend on God, we are going to obey God's commandments, God's precepts, God's statutes. We are going to listen to his voice and we are going to allow God to take lead in our lives. We are going to allow God to show us the direction that we should take. We are going to seek God's guidance in everything that we do. Any decision that we have to make, we are going to invite God to come forth and lead us on. We ask this good Lord, who is full of love for us, who sustains our lives, to open our hearts, to create space in our hearts, so that we may be saturated with the divine love. And this divine love may be reflected to the brothers and sisters that we live with, that we work with, that we interact with. And in that way, we begin making this world a better place to live in, a better place for everyone, where no one is ignored, where no one is left behind, where everyone is respected, is treated with dignity, the dignity that the Lord has bestowed on us. Amen.
Shall we now all stand as we present our prayers to the Lord? My dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from our God, let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing as we pray. For all who have vowed themselves to God, that with his help they may faithfully keep their resolve, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear us. For those who hold public office and those who assist them in promoting the common good, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear us. For the elderly who suffer from isolation or sickness, that they may be strengthened by our love of them as brothers and sisters, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear us. For all gathered here in this sacred place, by faith and devotion to the sacred heart, and by the love and reverence for our God, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear us. From the silence of our hearts, we also present the prayers, anxieties, and concerns which we are bringing before the Lord in this novena. Also being mindful of the many people who are expecting us to be praying for them. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear us. May the petitions of your church during this novena be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We offer you sacrifice, O Lord, humbly praying that 
as you granted the blessed martyrs grace to die rather than sin, so you may bring us to minister at your altar in dedication to you alone, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's true, right, and just, our duty and our salvation, always and ever, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, Charles Long and companions, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear your witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together Francis our Pope, Alec our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her blessed spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Ignatius of Loyola, and indeed with all the saints and martyrs who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of our mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Together we pray for peace and unity in our midst. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. My sisters, my brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who go to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to eternal life.
most holy heart of Jesus, fountain of every blessing, I adore you, I love you, and with a life sorrow for my sins. I offer you this poor heart of mine. Make me humble, patient, and pure, and wholly obedient to thy will. Grant, good Jesus, that I may live in you and for you. Protect me in the midst of danger. Comfort me in my afflictions. Give health of body, assistance in my temporal needs, your blessing on all that I do, and the grace of a holy death. Hear the intentions. I bring to this novena. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Go forth, our mass is ended.